Cool, so we are going backtrack to build this 7V. So the first part we are going to present again is the keyboard. And we are going to replace the badge with this PVD black badge. So this is a client build. I don't really get a 7V. I was not in the group by time. I mean, I was not in the hobby when it was group by. I kind of having this one like in my list, but I don't really know how I can justify $100 of group by when I'm just started hobby. So this is the tools, hex tool and uh, Felix tool. So look at this one, this box. We have the 6U bar. If you are building a 6U space bar, you usually don't get a 6U from, you know, stabilizers purchase. And we have the two from this one. And we also have the black PVD badge if you're getting one. So the client want this one. So we will get that installed. And the client also want to use this PVD black weight. Yeah, we will get the original weight back to this stuff. Uh, I think I entered the hobby last May, so a year ago. More than a year ago now. But I only have tofu 60% beginning. And I think I sold my tofu. And the person who got my tofu want to get the same one, but in 65% immediately after they get it. That's where I started the build commission because the person who got the tofu want another one. And I just like keep building that for other people now. Actually, I I know Mr. Frosties also from the tofu selling. Yeah, at the time I was selling two tofu. I got first tofu uh, with black aluminum, and I got the second tofu with acrylic. And I finished building two, and I move on to the next keyboard, and I just buy uh, buy a new keyboard by selling the old keyboard. At the price of my cost and you know like very cheap price of my service because I think I do a lot of good work and if you really see my early YouTube channel videos I did several mods on my tofu board that was a good time Vega okay I think this is a little bit interesting time because it was when the like hobby exploded. Okay, cool. So how can we replace the weight? We unscrew that, but we still have other two screws to unscrew. Yeah, anyway, I start trying to selling my keyboard. And people want me to build the same keyboard. So I just built another one. And then I, I know Mr. Frosty is from selling my keyboard. Even he didn't buy the keyboard I get. What a jerk. Ask me to sell, but not buying? No, just kidding. Yeah, anyway, like he basically didn't get, but then he regrets want to get another um, tofu build. So he basically asked me like what the parts should he get to get a board. So that's when he encouraged me to charge a fair amount for any service going forward. <laughs> yeah. 
I think the NK65 milkshake is a good buy. Overall, it's a great keyboard for whoever like doesn't really want to go too deep in the hobby, but want to get a decent keyboard without need to, you know, like loop and film their switches because that takes a long time. But if you want to get better experience with that, you still need to loop and film, so that doesn't make sense. <laughs> No. Yeah, I also get the NK65 Olivia because I love, love the colorway too much. Now I would definitely say I regret because I don't really need one. Okay, so we have the black PVD to replace the original Send a raw finish. nerve-wracking moment I don't want to drop this one so put it back don't drop don't drop don't drop okay don't scratch don't scratch don't scratch <sighs> okay put it back don't scratch put it back don't scratch protection protect it Yeah, I know. I feel like there will be additional delay, especially on the shipping and logistic. Yeah, I don't think things will go that smoothly with other like ETA. So I, I'm expecting to see it's getting delivered on Q4. Okay. Anyway, we got. Uh, I need to search for build guide. Be a second. So, basically, for you to build 7B, you want to search for build guide. And the first one you have is the GB thread from GOG. And then you go to the first post. You have a big link say download the build guide here. Uh, and, sorry. Yeah, this is the build guide. Okay, what we are going to do is before you start, test the PCB, yes. Bump pump, case screw. Okay, you need to remove the case screw, then you need to put on the contact pad. Interesting. So the contact pad. Huh. This is an interesting board to put it back. So we are going to put our weight here and we have this contact pad. Did it say the direction? Place the contact pad onto the weight as shown in the diagram below. So we either go this way or go other way. Which way should we go? Yeah, maybe this way. Yeah, I think I will get that, right? Because they mentioned they will just like upgrade all the basic shipping, standard shipping. Yes. Yeah, actually at the time I buy that, I didn't really know like they are offering pretty bad standard shipping. So when you try to get some limited item, you don't want to spend like two seconds to change your shipping. That's why I didn't change shipping. Okay, we are going to put the contact pad like this and put back the bottom case. And then we were going to screw these screws back. Yeah, if I know this choice of shipping, I would definitely choose the DHL for, I don't know, 30 bucks more. But the truth is, I don't want to take time to switch that shipping. I want to like just get the fastest speed to get item and ask them.
Yeah, I like DHL. Once they are on the plane, they are pretty fast. Okay, so we got this 7V with the black PVD weight. This is super sexy. I don't think it's really uh, like the same as in stream, but they are super sexy. The black PVD weight. I think the SE Jelly will have very similar weight. So I am actually expecting to see that very quickly. Okay, so the next is putting the guest. Hmm, why it's so fast? <laughs> yeah, this is the exact same finish I'm getting from my jelly, which is exciting. Okay, now we need to unscrew additional case screws. Oh. Yeah, with all the PVD stuff, it looks really premium. Don't you think? Yeah, I don't even know this like DHL HK versus normal DHL. <laughs> Two months, exactly. But now I know all of the SE are the same color. So even I get it like five days later than yours, I'm fine. Before I was just want to get to know like my color immediately. But now I'm fine with some delay because I know first I have plenty on build board to work on. Second, I'm not getting some special color. But I got some like custom cut FR4 plate, which I'm happy to use. Okay, this is pretty heavy. Probably want to do this way. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. Okay. Gasket. Wait, so now we have the bottom part, we can put the bump on. So we don't really scratch. Actually, with all this stuff, I don't think it will scratch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. When you really like think about in stock, you won't really know it's not actually in stock. I think they force ad advertisement on that. It's definitely not in stock. It's pre-order. Yeah, at the time they definitely haven't finished any of SE. I don't even think they finish all of the keyboard. They probably just try to sell things and start dragging the progress. They want to sell before the holiday so that like once holiday comes they can have excuse not fulfilling the orders you think other keyboard were down i don't know but yeah if you haven't started definitely not be able to like sell that much but if you already started that's probably fine Okay, so we have the keyboard here and we have the keyboard this one. Now we are going to peel the gasket. Peel off the gasket from the sheet and place them on top case in the location illustrated below. Using the tweezer will make application much easier. Okay, tweezer. I will need to use tweezer. Just don't jump, don't jump. The question is, do we need to apply on the bottom case, on the top case? Wait, is top case or bottom case? Top case. So the bottom case, we don't really need to have... Really? It's interesting. Yeah, I think 
To learn how gasket mount works is an interesting part. Especially sometimes you need the top gasket, sometimes you need the bottom gasket, and I still don't really know like how they work differently. Okay, they are super small. I've seen streamers like working on this keyboard and taking time on this step a lot. I mean take a lot of time on this step. So I hope I'm not getting it bad. Yeah, I think Sarah was pretty honest and also take all the claims for the fault. Yeah, he's a pretty good guy. I just don't really know how like the vendor really compensate him for all the work he did. It's definitely stressful work. Yeah, I don't think I spend that much of energy. Keyboard goodbye. I probably want to like avoid doing all this beforehand. <laughs> you want to get one more Rosco TKL? Hi, OG. You come at a good time. At the time I'm assembling the case. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it's not you, it's me on the delay, but at least I restart the system, it's getting better. So this is the interesting part of this gasket mount design. It's actually put the gasket on the top case, not the bottom case. So that means it tried to uh, stop it from like hitting the top. Oh, you can set it to have low latency? Okay, I need to check it out. Warning, the gasket should only be applied to the top, not the bottom. Well, it's a good warning. I almost did on the bottom case. But this small gasket, yeah, if you see how small they are, really hard to apply. Take your time. So how many we have? Uh, four by seven. Yeah, we have two packs. Yeah, interesting. Why they send two packs? It just make people want to apply on the top case as well, uh, bottom case as well. But it's probably for the replacement. If you are not doing good job, or if you want to do on your plate, you can still uh, on your PCB. You can still do it. Okay, I need to like confirm if I did right. The gasket should only be applied to the top, not the bottom. This is the top, right? I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay, I will do that on my phone later as well. Yeah, who is actually waiting for Teha's Tomo build? But I know like his building speed won't uh, get him down within two hours so I should have plenty of time to spend before he can build his and listen to the typing sound <laughs> yeah this stream should be pretty chill especially I already max the PCB so you won't hear all the fan noise So all the steps right now were soldering free. I like that stage. Like once past soldering. It's pretty chill. Okay. Applying gasket may not be as chill as you thought. <laughs> it's re really easy to like kind of, I won't say mess up, but miss a line. Or even get the gas kit attached to itself. Yeah, the 3M 
and hence it is really powerful. But yeah, glad I have another pair. At least client, if they want to redo that, they can redo. I'm not going to like, you know, nitpicking on my gasket. Otherwise I will probably take forever to do the gasket. Yeah, as long as they fill the gap off the top case, should be fine. But yeah, this is pretty interesting gasket implementation. I will definitely try to get a feel of that. It's very different from, you know, other like Perron gasket on the plate. Five to 10 seconds, that's pretty good. Okay, so OG, if you haven't seen, we replaced the 7V with the black PVD brass weight, which is pretty stealth and nice looking. I don't know, maybe it's just easy to show that from this angle. <laughs> and hope I don't really drop anything on, on it. Just leave it alone. Don't throw my tweezer on it. I will be heartbroken. Need to spend another $200 to get replacement for my client. I think it's still in stock because it's so expensive. Oh, actually, we also have the black. PVD brass batch that we are going to replace, which we are going to do it now. As I'm just like putting the gasket on this corner, sounds like a good moment to touch it. Yeah, getting Tomo is a big thing. Take your time, watch the stream. And don't just judge by the sound test. You probably want to look at like typing view, assembling the internal, everything. Yeah, I think my problem is I like all the layout. <laughs> Sometimes like I have no preference. I just like things. As long as they look good. Uh, well, I have some preference, like the design that's too busy, I don't really like. Some match matrix keyboard is not my type. Okay, so we got this. Yeah, let's take a look on this one. So this is the raw stainless steel polished. And this is the PVD brass. So if people want to know like what the polished stainless steel look like compared to like PVD brass, black brass, yeah, these are the two batch they look. Yeah, definitely paying for the TGR name. And interestingly, I feel like maybe Sam, which is basically the TGR designer, could get much more from this collaboration than his own, like GB, or uh, her own GB. Because, like, the TGR Dream CEV2 just takes so long to fulfill. Yeah, if you have other material like the copper. Copper is a good one. So for the Iron 165R2, I'm getting copper weight, copper batch, and stainless steel weight, stainless steel batch. It's a big investment. I want to get different feeling on that. Yeah, you really don't have much delay. 
<laughs> yeah, Frog Mini is interesting, but I don't think I will get that. It's definitely an entry level 60% top mount keyboard. Definitely good for the market, for whoever enter into the hobby that they can get a reasonable price, 60%. Yeah, I, I don't know how I get the Iron 165. Okay, so this is the black PVD brass logo. Yeah, look at the reflection. It's actually pretty unnoticeable. It's a black one with all the reflection. It feels like the raw stainless steel as well. Unicorn is hard. I feel like even they have another sale, I won't be able to get that. I'm definitely get into the raffle of Elaine's 65%. Yeah, you see what they try to propose for the raffle? first come first serve raffle <laughs> so you have to be quick and also with some luck yeah I don't know if I will be quick enough for the raffle but I think I'm quick enough for other first come first serve so it's just like really about the luck but maybe for people who was not into first come first serve it's another thing dimension they need to consider consider how to quick submit the form yeah two step yeah I don't know if they should allow like really high percentage like raffle rate and then I lost I will probably regret or maybe like speaking about that for like half a year until I get the next keyboard raffle win Imagine losing a raffle with 50% win rate. I think his board is always raffle. <laughs> or maybe like there's only one board so far. That's why I feel like all the boards from him will be raffle. And he knows how to hype the product and connect that to the enemy, right? <laughs> yeah, he knows his customers too much. How to get the sale going on. <laughs> yeah, I also won that raffle. Yeah, I think I was pretty lucky early this year. Won several raffles, got several first come first serve. So my Q3 will be looking good. Like I have my Forever 65 coming next Tuesday. Yeah, who is the manufacturer of Nemo? Is that Selvin? Yeah, I know it's actually a well-known person who will do that. That's why I have more faith on the delivery time as well as the quality. Otherwise, I probably won't really go for that raffle since I, I'm not sure how like someone's first keyboard will be. But if you are getting to a well-known designer or manufacturer, and with like a cool PCB that is designed by Woba, Gondo, or Heine, I will probably like feel more comfortable. 
Yeah, I think the top PCB designers are AIO3, Heine, Wilba, Gondo, and even Upas. They design good PCB, which make some time like easy to enter for some keyboard group by because you know if they were the PCB designer, the keyboard definitely be a uh, on a serious consideration. But don't forget all the Chinese designers. They they can work with PCB factory every day to make sure they get a good PCB. So that's like a very different market of design and keyboard goodbye. Cloudline is gold this year for TKL. But the truth is it's Canon key, Raffle Q again. <laughs> yeah, that purple match is pretty good. You know fun fact? Jackie's purple will look similar to that purple. Yeah, just because like that purple was pretty hyped recently. So getting that purple could uh, make some people who want to put their like toots or other keycap sets on that keyboard. But the, the trending is always changing. Okay, now, okay, some alerts. Am I getting frame drop now? I don't want to worry too much about that. But now we are going to loop our stabilizers. Oh, we haven't snapped PCB edge. Okay, forget about that. And don't really ruin your PCB by snapping this all, all the parts here. Don't destroy your leaf spring when you're doing this step. You can use your hand, you can also use other like material to do it. Do I do this as well? Let me check the guide. Okay, we break off the panel frame from the main PCB, be careful not damage leaf spring. So the red part is only this one. Huh. Interesting. What about the side? Yeah, I think you probably cannot put the side like this. So definitely need to break. And don't break the leaf spring. different too. So that's not leaf spring that I snap off. The leaf spring is actually like when you put on the top case and the bottom case. Okay, be careful not to destroy the leaf spring. I'm a little bit afraid of doing that. <laughs> yeah, this part is a little bit tricky. But you definitely need to do that, otherwise you cannot put PCB into the case. Okay, another two. Yeah, hopefully I don't really break this leaf spring. Yeah, this is actually not good implementation. I don't really know if I will 
destroy my leaf spring or not. Yeah, I don't think it's a good implementation at all. So I still have some like residue here that I need to kind of like get rid of. Yeah, I wonder how other people is able to do that. Okay, do I just like snap? So many residue. Did I get a bad PCB somehow? Yeah, I don't feel like this is the way. But I don't see other ways. Okay, let's see if we can put this to the top case. Just to do some tests. Okay, still a little bit sticking out. I think this is the worst part of this keyboard design so far. I don't really know if I did it right. <laughs> yeah, at least like the instruction doesn't do the same thing. So if you look at the instruction, yeah, let me show you. Like the left side doesn't even touch the PCB and the leaf spring. And why the real production ones actually touch it. So this part, I don't even know how they actually remove it. I wonder if this is the PCB that having problem. Oh my god, this is the PCB that I have in here. And I use that to build the keyboard. I didn't even check. So look at this. It didn't connect. It's not even the same. So this one, it didn't connect. Yeah, I should use this PCB to build. But the problem is, I already mill max that. So I end up getting a, diff, uh, a 40 PCB and didn't realize until I finish. That's so sad. Is this a QC issue? As long as I don't destroy the leaf spring, that's just like somehow make it better. Yeah, I don't want it to stuck to the top case and bottom case.
Okay. I mean, I'm at least I'm glad I'm the one who doing the work, rather than the client who doesn't know how to do that. Okay. Cool. So with this, if we put the case a PCB here, yeah. Now it's definitely better. Okay, again, we are going to loop our stabilizers. Huh. Can I imagine applying gasket and doing this PCB work takes longer than I expect. Uh, well, I, I can say I can imagine that. What's going on, Siri? Shut up. But cannot imagine Wilbur PCB has such issue. Yeah, that that was so bad. I don't even know how to explain that. Actually, I don't even know if other people had the same issue, because apparently I see people having different kind of issue. But this is probably not one of that. <laughs> okay, I'm looping the stabilizers with two hundred five G zero on the housing. As usual, and I will use Dragon Ball on the while. And same as Teha, I'm still experimenting how much loop I'm getting on the while. And if you use Dragon Ball before, and if you have any experience, let me know. I think I should like clip the part I have a 40 PCB and send to the 7V channel and ask if there's anyone who had the same issue. <laughs> That's so interesting. I mean, I cannot believe if I'm the only one in the world to get that. But last time I see a person who got the hot swap PCB, and there is actually one socket installed in an opposite direction blocking the switch to be inserted and all hot swap socket were installed by machine so this is actually one of error when maybe the socket was not installed but the manufacturer the factory worker tried to install that back and in an opposite direction So that person was really unlucky. And I now I'm the unlucky one who got a such premium keyboard PCB with a 41. Yeah, I should have opened both PCB. So I know okay, this is really going bad. Oh, I should take a closer look on the guide and realize my PCB is not the same, but how do I know? Yeah, so far, how do you feel about this 7V? Is it worth you paying more than a thousand bucks on it? by just looking at that because I think this is definitely not the best sounding keyboard based on all the streams so far 
like jelly is still the better one. So if people are paying that thousand bucks on the 7V, like the lock is probably very important. Yeah, me too. And people are paying like a thousand on jelly as well, <laughs> which is also very insane. I mean, I realized how much rich people, or maybe how many people who are willing to spend that much money are out there looking at this Mac market. Yeah, I think if you are selling a jelly for just like under a thousand, people will say good price, which is what like definitely insane. But yeah, market is market. Whatever people is willing to pay, decide market value. So I have no complaint on that. All I do is not trying to buy from the market. And if I have to sell, I will not try to sell at the higher end, but I will not try to sell at the lower end as well because I don't want to have someone just like buy it out from me and try to flip once he get it. Yeah, that's the hardest part. If you are doing the good person in this market, like you, you may get something, but the market may not get that back. Unless like all the people who are selling, trying to just lower the price as a group effort. I don't think it's possible. So I think for any like kind of old in stock keyboard, selling at MSRP is probably reasonable, but since it's like in stock at this moment for other people to get I mean if they cannot get it now then probably selling a little bit over than MSRP like trying to just show like how much effort you already spend on the keyboard is probably fun so I will say like average addition I will add is like 20 to 30 bucks so 200 I think that's a reasonable price Especially consider people who need to get a TOEFL 65 today have to spend that much money as well. Yeah, it's more like you should consider what people have uh, in the comparison. So people who want to get this board may be the people who will get a TOEFL. So if they know like top mount is better than trim mount and they like the KBD67 look, I think around the same price will definitely change their mind but if like it's $50 more than what they can get from tofu they probably will not do that so that's why I think like 200 is definitely reasonable okay dragon ball is so messy you know I probably have to get another paper tower to clean my hands Especially hot swap is a good way. Like I've seen hot swap PCB on tofu 60%, seven, uh, 65% were selling out very quickly every time they restock. So I think this is pretty reasonable, to be honest. But sometimes people are selling hot swap boards with their switch and claim uh, all the effort and the money on the switches that's usually not a good sale because most people won't need a switch for a hot swap board so you'd rather like selling them separately
New Max, yeah. New Max is the way. Unless you can get some hot swap PCB that support multiple layout, which I actually got for uh, the the pol polarize. Do we want to actually have a check, like checked out on that kind of PCB? It's actually very interesting. Let me show that. So this is basically uh, the hot swap PCB I got for Mr. Frosty. And this is basically the top. And you can see it supports all the layout for 7U, 6.25U, uh, the split right shift, the split backspace, and even the split left shift and caps lock. So all sockets it's like everything <laughs> yeah i will probably build sometime and verify if it really supports all the layout i want but yeah if you can get a hot swap pcb like this one yeah feel free i don't know maybe it's still problematic like if it's broken you don't know how to fix it not like you can just solder the switch in if you take out the like sockets from mumax but yeah, this is pretty interesting. Okay, it's another time. Like the side sunshine is taking the priority of the lighting here. Yeah, I don't think I like mastered how to use Dragon Ball loop yet. So hopefully the client can give me more time to tune the stabilizers. Especially this is a hot swap build, so probably can just like disassemble everything and try to make it work. In addition, I probably want to take a look on like how plateless build will be for this keyboard if I'm using Mumax. Will that even work? Mumax with plateless. Do you think it will work? Yeah, maybe it's a really hard sell. A Mumax with plateless. Probably go safer with the plate. I mean, anyway, the plate is FR4, so the sound will probably be similar. It just like the playlist will be much flexible, a flex typing experience. But I have plenty of time to try other playlist builds. F1, the new, and what else? Yeah, I think 7v playlist is an interesting concept. Okay, question. Chats. Should I build this with playlist on <laughs> Mumax socket? Or should I just go with the regular FR4 plate? And call it a day. Which one is more interesting to you? Yeah. Plateless, Mumax. Yeah, let's do it. How about that? Yeah, 
actually what's interesting is this is mu max so it's not end out word if I get something bad and I need to send to the client once it's everything like built so probably I will do another I won't probably not build stream or maybe build stream tomorrow just try the FR4 plate build then I can send to the client but I don't think client is like in any hurry so let's take time try different configuration and plate list will be interesting half plate I need to know how to make half plate or maybe people will know how to make half plate I will probably just organize the full plate and leave for people to make a half plate to file yeah I don't want to like handle too much logistic too much like school number stuff you know like all organizing one small group by I already like prepare for the stress of that yeah imagine you have the plate and you are sending out like 20 each every day and you have to send the full week if there's like enough demand and people still like complain about speed I mean it's totally possible Okay, everything's so clean here. And let's just do the stabilizers onto the plate uh, onto the PC. Okay, the dust is getting here, but I hope it didn't really scratch the surface. And hopefully with the platform uh not platform like the plate list, we can go a little bit faster or maybe slower we'll see once we start it it's an interesting concept new max with plate list. maybe it will turn out to be a bad decision but that's why we are streaming here not trying to go the easiest way is try to go the way that people want to see and potentially fail what's better than the potential of failing like why I'm getting the 7U <laughs> did I swap that and still get a 7U? what I'm at down person yeah you can definitely send me that is that too bad the stock stabilizers You can see how much time I spend on lubing the stabilizers. It's definitely a process and the hardest part of a build. Yeah, no problem. I can definitely replace them with uh, like Duroc V2 or Everglide V2 or C3 so that it will not go broken yeah usually like it's why popping out or just like ticking yeah if it doesn't feel right probably popping out
So the other day I was like having a second of thoughts to get a pre-order of Cyberboard. <laughs> not not Cyberboard. Cyber Truck. But soon the thoughts stopped because I just like measure my garage. I cannot even park the car in my garage. It's too long. I can park, but that means my washer and dryer cannot operate. I haven't done any holy mods. I just like don't know if it's worth the time. And also if it goes bad, whether it's easy to fix or not. Yeah, if I would do that, I would definitely charge a little bit more because it definitely take a long time to do it. And also, I don't know if it will reduce the travel of uh, stabilizers because added basically it um, make the space of the space uh, the stabilizers while moving like smaller so technically yes stabilizers move less travel less than previously so it definitely changed the dynamic of the stabilizers and I don't know if it's worth doing like compared to other regular like lubing mods oh so the client want the band-aid mode which is actually not really a hard thing to do with the C3 but yeah definitely need to do that before we screw in the stabilizers Yeah, I usually don't try something that new first because I know like there's all kinds of experience that people will learn from it and have improvement on that. I mean, I can't be part of that, but I just don't have that much time to do that. I mean the most interesting one but also the most tedious one is uh, FC mod which I don't really know if I can justify the time of reusing that material but it's an interesting thought for sure Maybe the midpoint is to reuse some material that's already ad adhesive and also easy to cut. That's why I'm probably more looking to the KBD fans stabilizers band aid or sticker if you cut that and see how that works. Last one. Huh. 
I'm really slow at the stabilizers. I mean, who doesn't? Okay, at least from the streaming time, it's not even one hour for 30 minutes yet, so I will call it a win so far, like at least it's not like 3 hour stream. Some stickers of the stabilizers. Do people start traveling nowadays? Especially the past long weekend. I haven't received resume the travel. I don't know when I will have the confidence to do that. You've been traveling around? Like by plane or just driving? Because I driving, I think it's safe. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm more talking about, you know, like casual traveling through the plane. I think driving is definitely safer. Like you are not going somewhere with someone you don't really know in a close area without like you know good air circulation so i'm definitely fine with like you know driving somewhere for the weekend okay so you are fully open now yeah i think california reopens in a few days so we are still in kind of like some alert state. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Testing the stabilizers. I definitely feel like the playlist could be a failure. <laughs> Let's see if it's a failure, then we are going to like do the plate one. So it will be very obvious if let's just like put the switches on. And put some keycaps. Yeah, maybe it depends on the switches I'm using. Yeah, they look so pretty and I think they match with the stabilizers a lot. Yeah, let's just try the keycaps so we will know whether they work or not. Okay, let's give a try. I have some kind of confidence. Just some kind, it's not like full confidence. Okay, look at how nice looking the switches and the stabilizers are.
and I like how easy to tune the stabilizers with platelets build. So maybe this is the way I go first, and once it's working, then I can put all the things back together with the plate and the plate form, and send back to the client. I think the plate list definitely goes very, how do I say that, very clean sound. Without platform, yes, platform will just mute too much and it may not be a good presentation of what you will like have with looped stabilizers. So definitely go without the platform to test the stabilizers and add the platform if you want to or maybe your client want to. Oh you mean just no plate? Sometimes I will definitely test with the plate because sometimes the noise comes with the plate. So you want to basically have the final test anyway. But I know how to fix with the plate up. Yeah, if you got the seven V and you don't really try the playlist I feel like it's a waste so definitely try the playlist like even for hot swap build give a try I mean I probably will try and regret but at least we can have a try and hopefully the Mumex socket holds all the switches nicely. Yeah, sometimes it's like pretty tight. I didn't I even like thought I didn't Mumex. So do the Mumex socket well, but if everything turns out good, I'm, I'm good. Oh, by the way, since I got the Discord Nitro stuff is my Discord status showing I'm streaming. I'm not even sure it's a Nitro feature. Oh, there's something special. <laughs> I also hope okay. Let me check the build guide next step So the case layout assembling Okay, we need the daughter board and put the bottom case. Okay, looks like
is your iPhone almost die? Yeah, sometimes I find like iPad watching stream is wonderful. Like you can see all the chats from the iPhone. The chats are so small on the streams. And if you want to see all the other chats, then you have to kind of go the portrait mode. And the stream itself is like so small. iPad definitely has the right re resolution for stream. Yeah, only my only complaint about the PCB is the QC should be better. Like I should not receive that PCB. But otherwise, the Wilbur PCB looks nice and also like very easy to install the socket. And the top right corner has no switches, so I didn't solder anything there. Don't waste any solder, uh, like socket. Yeah, TX Spring is probably must have for hype collides. Like hype glide is pretty too heavy to me. And there's no way for me to type on like black switches for the whole day. <laughs> they have everything. Anything you want, they can find it. What's the weight? Are you daily? What? Are you trolling me? That's why you need all the TX spring, uh, TX springs, right? Because no switches can satisfy you. Unless you are telling me today is April 1st. Then you're probably a big fan of Seal Switches by Mintly. Yeah, these switches cost maybe like $1.20. That's why it looks so good. But most of the time you don't really see them. Okay, this is everything putting together and now it's time to uh, put back the case. Don't drop, don't drop, don't drop, don't drop, don't drop, don't drop. Okay, yeah, I need to remind me like all the time because this weight is so good. I don't think I should be able to keep it if I suddenly drop it. Okay, now the question is, okay, school is here. Yeah, they, they are the same. The only difference is the color and also the default spring weight. So if you have a reasonable spring weight I even just like need to change the spring weight all the time then it's not too much difference
Okay, one good thing about that. Yes, I already put the weight at the bottom, so I have less chance to scuff that. Okay, I just don't know why it's so hard to screw in this daughter board. Maybe it's because the weight. Like, it's so slippery. Or maybe it's because of, like, using the screwdriver is probably easier. Okay, that makes sense. I think hex is probably fine with this too, but like the Phillips screwdriver is definitely better. Those little steps on the tab isn't going to nap if you flex too much. I don't think so. It's a P, uh, FR4 material. So it, they look thin, but they will be put onto like all the slots here. And they are pretty durable. I can test it for you. So this is what you are going to put and you can like kind of see or maybe like test like this one. So they are pretty durable and even like the smaller ones, not a lot. Okay so we put, before that we need to connect the daughter board. <laughs> you are not going to be able to use the daughter board without connecting that. like this or maybe just like connect first yeah let me like connect that then try to type something okay works so connect connect like do that then put the PCB here okay still have a little bit gap and make all the leaf spring like stuck onto the slot then the top case finally things putting together huh Then you need to flip, be careful, don't drop. <laughs> then you can use the tool to screw everything back. Yeah, always corner first. Oh, cannot believe we are almost there. Yeah, so far, the same question. Do you think it's worth a thousand bucks? <laughs> Yeah, soon I will just compare this one with the E7V2 which you probably can spend half the price to get from the extras and I believe there will be, I won't say like plenty extras but there will be a fair amount of extras easier than 7V extras Cannot guarantee but that's my guess Okay, 
at least I'm glad I didn't scuff anything. Uh, how's the music going so far? Okay. Yeah, just some regular music. So it's really heavy on the weight, but now we can the OA switch. Always switch is nice. Let's just go all white. I don't really need the black accent on this keyboard. But you will definitely notice the GMK bleached. It's pretty white compared to the E white. Oh, really? They are deeper in ink than ink? Oh, what's going on here? I think they are good, but I don't know if they are deeper than ink. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Different person have different um, you know, kind of sounds. understanding of more muted okay good to know Oh, so there is a little bit difference than the command and what I'm doing. I'm not really doing the FR4 plate. Did I say FR4 plate? Yes, I say FR4 plate. So right now I'm actually just doing the playlist build. So everything is Mumax but playlist. And the E-White is actually pretty creamy, I would say. So if you were expecting the whitest white, this is actually not the one. I think GMK Bleach can definitely show you like how creamy this E-White is. Okay, I can already feel like the switch I'm not holding very well with plateless build. Probably good to test all the steps and maybe switches. Then if you want to like go this plateless build, maybe you have to solder yourself. Or if you like the switches and you can go to the plate build. But yeah, I don't think I will recommend using playlists with Mumax socket for you know like really long time
this is probably not the best keycaps to put on this e white unit, to be honest. Yeah, if I can give recommendation to the client, I will probably recommend a different one. Yeah, I feel like GMK Olivier would be better. So mode 80 is very white then because apparently this is not white enough. I can also compare this one with the E7 V2 E white because I need to compare that anyway. Uh, what the keycaps do we put here? Delete, page up. Page down. Okay. Yeah, if it's like too wide, then you basically get the uh, uh, like blue tone for a bit. Like same as LED. Sometimes you don't really get. Okay. For a second, I thought I don't have a shot shift, but <laughs> there's no way you have no shot shift. But it's actually on the wrong. Column, so let me clean up something. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you want to add it, but not working. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's just like check it out. It's heavy, so I want to make sure I don't really drop that. Yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, so basically we have the 7V E white with GMK bleached, and you can see this is actually not the perfect match color and the side profile. Sorry, I don't want to hold the weight to leave my fingerprint. And this is the look from the back. Okay, maybe it's so heavy at the like the bottom, the rear bottom. So definitely, like when you lift the keyboard, it doesn't really feel very, you know, how do you say that? Like very balanced. And this is the PVD black. Is that PVD brass black? A uh, black PVD brass. Basically, it should be similar finish as the SE weight of jelly. So it's pretty sexy, huh? To reflect all the lights and yourself. <laughs> I will make sure I don't really destroy that before returning to the client. And this is also like the black PVD badge. Yeah, in total it's like 200 bucks on top of the unit itself. Okay, typing test. After typing test, I have to go for dinner and probably similar to you. Yeah, I know. I actually affiliate with that sponsor. So if you type in the discount, uh, it's like maybe 50 cents <laughs> with that. Anyway, cool, let's do the typing test. Oh, interesting. It was working before I. Is that because of like this is so deep? Okay, at least like before I assemble together, the keyboard works.
Shutting because of no plate. But I actually like screw the daughter board. And just like right before pulling together. Oh yeah, it's possible. You're right. Like maybe when I finally connect together, I have the daughter board disconnected a little bit. Let's just unscrew the case back. Yeah, the daughter board is not like a very secure point. Ah, the cable was a bit too short. That's also possible. Oh, thanks, Gok. You were coming to see the 7V. So let me check if I have some like better, longer cable. Yeah, definitely like seeing this USB port is a little bit like recessed. Okay, I don't know how you can see it. Okay, so I have this cable. Not sure if it's enough. But another chance is the daughter board disconnected. Yeah, let me still just trying to open up to reduce that chance. Yeah, that's the Melky cable. Is Melky cable like known to be shot? Shorter? Okay. Then let me find if I have a longer cable. Okay, so that's a no no issue. I mean the other one is probably similar. So if you look at the other one is similar. So they are not like longer, shorter. Let me get another cable I have. Hope this is longer. Okay, let's go this way. Hmm. Maybe it's still daughter board disconnected. Yeah, at least like when I put together uh, before I put together looks like it's working so maybe I just like pull out the daughter board a little bit good question if this cable doesn't work for my other board it works so the cable works Yeah, that's another thing. I, I definitely checked that before assembling, but maybe it is connected. Okay, love the weight. I don't want to scratch that. Yes, <laughs> it's the disconnected after I put it back. Mystery solved. 
Okay, I need to put it back, then try to type on that. Mr. Frosty, you're right. I don't know when that happened, but that's apparently when it happened. Is that possible like when you type a little bit hard? It will do like that. Or maybe the cable is a little bit short. Yeah, I need to test that. Okay, so not working again. Oh, first, I need to like make sure it's working without booting back. So, like, not because of PCB soldering issue or something. Yeah, so it's working at this point. So I can I can definitely feel that it disconnected when I finally put together. So yeah, basically like when I try to move, uh, put down, I can see this play uh, PCB didn't really align with the bottom case enough. So I need to put it down. So once I put it down, I feel like it's disconnected. So I feel like the cable is a little bit not not the cable of this cable, but the JST cable maybe a little bit short yeah but i will i have another cable i can try hopefully this is better but yeah just a little bit tight tolerance oh actually i have this pcb which is so bad yeah. I can show you that so Gok, I think your build guide is pretty good when I actually see this cape, uh, this PCB I definitely know this is a right one like I can basically see this gap but the PCB I built like unluckily this part was connected with the PCB. So you can definitely see that. Yeah, so I have to like snap that and I didn't realize this is a bad PCB at all. <laughs> so this PCB is definitely cursed. And after I build everything, I, I find it's probably fine. Okay, let's compare to the GSD cable. Yeah, so you can see the bad one is definitely shorter than the the good one. So we basically have the same left side, but right side a little bit short. Okay, let's use this cable. No, tape tape onto the bottom PC will not really work because like how do I say that it will interfere with the PCB and it didn't like go this route route it slot but yeah definitely that PCB that uh, this PCB this daughter board <laughs> not really like interfere I think it's just like putting it at the bottom with the slot feels nicer if you tape that it just like have one more thing when you are uh, like vibrant when you type on the keyboard you know what I mean like having one movement uh, one part to move is not good okay hopefully this is getting better yeah definitely like when I put it down it's working and and I can type things. Okay, anyway, the result is the PCB itself has two parts scuffed 
One is it has connection between the site and the PCB itself. The second is this daughter board is so strange, like shorter than necessary. Now we can put it back again and have a final typing test. Yes, bleach is so white that this EY7V feels like a creamy looking. I will probably have a color comparison later. Yes, I think WS2 is a little bit blue. I actually don't like bleach on this keyboard, but client sent me, so I just use that. But actually, if I'm not building the final configuration he's having, maybe I shouldn't even use this keycap set. <laughs> so, oh, one more. Yeah, I like WS1. It's like the balance between WS2 and CP. How oh, is the Enjoy PPT Gawk black on white also a nice fitting on this one? Like your own sets. <laughs> okay, cool. So finally, let's see. Yeah, we can get some typing tests properly now. Okay, so basically this is the e-white version of 7V and we built this with plateless Mumax socket uh, 7305 and the switches are Telios looped with Quartox 205G0 and the keycaps we are using is GMK bleached and we will see how a Mumax socket version with plateless will work together. Okay, some test, take one. And here's the mod sound. Yeah, some keys are weird. Maybe it's the switch I can try to change. And also like playlist will make the switch, you know, like sometimes you can go up and down. So probably not the best when you have new Mac sockets. I think like overall the sound is a little bit muted to me. I don't know if it's because of the switch. Uh let me just like change maybe some switches to 
something else and have a feeling of like how those switches will sound differently if I change to other. Like Telios usually just like feels a little bit muted, um, too less characteristic for me. So maybe let's try uh, what switch is compatible. Yeah, that's the switches I like a lot. I mean, just get some feeling about different switches sounds on this keyboard. Okay. So what the part you don't like the playlist, the sounds or the feeling? Yeah, I think the typing feeling is definitely like bouncy, bouncier than if you have plate. So if you are aiming for most flex typing feeling, like go to plateless, it's a very unique typing feeling. Ready for the book. Okay, so D F G H J. Yeah, definitely not for long term. If you can see other like legends, they are not like hundred percent aligned. So very easy to like you know move the switch around. So definitely, if you want to go playlist, try to solder then go this way okay so have some uh, like comparison so the Telios and the Competo this is Competo and this is Tilo. Yeah, I think I like, I definitely like a little bit like clacky or maybe louder sounds on the computer. Yeah, maybe people will like what Tilo's offers, but computer is definitely my preference here. And what else do we want to have test here? So we change switches, we do the playlist. I don't think I have time bandwidth to test everything, but yeah, I think this is, uh, yeah, you, you prefer like Telios. Okay, so how's the function row sound? Okay, flex test. Yeah, so I would say if you are like really high, like heavy typer, I feel like the whole board was like kind of bouncy if you type like really heavy. So let's go to side profile. Okay, actually side is probably not very easy to see, huh? But yeah, if you just like look from this angle, you can see the flex. But yeah, another thing I want to show is like how it compared to other e white or even like e beige. <laughs> so this is the e seven v two e white bottom. Oh, from the camera they look similar, huh? So not very different from the camera, but yeah, from re in real life. I think the E7 V2 bottom E white is a little bit like, you know, wider. And then the E beige. Yeah, definitely you can see it's like creamy, much yellow beige color. Yeah, so this is also kind of very flex. Yeah, still feel like a little bit creamy or maybe it's from the angle i can try to do different angle
Okay, because from the camera, I don't think I see creamy. Oh yeah, you can see that. Yeah, your piggy right there. So the E7, you probably want to plug that in. Yeah, hopefully I don't scratch anything because like it has the lighting mode, but it also has the lighting bleeding double side sort. Yeah, so if you just look at their explosion or maybe how the layout are different are the same. Okay, I don't know what you want to really compare here. So from the like the sizing, they're pretty much the same. And the top bottom bezel, I think the 7V had a little bit larger top bottom bezel. Yeah, maybe like stop this lighting. And the arrow key cluster. I think the gap is pretty similar. Yeah, I think this can be done easily by comparing these two plates, the E7 plate on top. So E7 plate on top and 7V plate on bottom. So you can see the arrow cluster are exactly the same location. And even on the right like column, they are basically ex exact the same. So if you look at all the gap here, yeah, just by eyeballing the location, they are pretty much the same. Yeah, so if you were worried about like adapting to these two layouts, they are pretty much the same. Like the 7, uh, 7V F13 key and our E7V213 uh, F13 key, they are on the same location. So I think from the top, if you're looking at the aesthetics, basically two big difference. One is the top bottom basal. 7V definitely has like a larger one and I think it kind of like mimic what F1 compared to other like TKL like large large not, but not that large and you can see like the basal here on the arrow cluster is too small on the E7 this is more balanced Yeah, you can see like on this keyboard, we have pretty much the same bottom bezel and the right, uh, right um, bezel for the arrow cluster. So that's pretty much like the change. And the other one would be the key. So we all have three keys on the right column, but one has a feature of LED panel and the other has the batch. So they are the two difference on the top. Then the side profile or the bottom profile. So this is like very clean look with the picking of the weight. And E7, basically you can grab the keyboard from the back and there is LED from the back. So if you try to plug in, you will have a LED. Hard to see from the stream. And lastly, the bottom. Bottom of day and night difference. So one is pretty clean from, you know, like just screw the bump on and 17V weight. And the other has bump on screws, this bridge looking that you can grab and the black uh, back plate and the logo itself. It will also light up. Yeah, so this is the bottom. I think if you are looking for more cleanness, 
like simplest looking, 7V is definitely looking more premium. And also if you just like compare the weight, 7V is much heavy. But also this PVD weight costs 175 bucks. So <laughs> consider if that adds to your cost. But yeah, anyway, this is pretty much like the comparison between these two keyboards from the look because I know like if people want to um, get the E7 because they miss out the 7V, this is like how you can see 7, 7V is different than E7. And maybe you want to grab the E7. Layout is very similar. The only thing is the blocker. And the typing sound. So this one I attribute with FR4 plate with Alpaca. And this one I built with um, Telius with um, Platelets. So maybe a little bit different sound. Let's just do very blind. And this keyboard FR4 plate with Alpaca. Yeah, they are not the same switch, so it's really hard to compare. But I think they are... They didn't really sound too much distinct, if you really think about like uh, the gas key mount. And also FR4 plate is basically like FR4 as plate uh, PCB material as well. Yeah, definitely like the Telio switch sounds very different. So let's compare the same like JWK family. Yeah, I feel like 7V has a deeper sound overall, even with the same JWK, but Componento is still Componento, maybe different sound signature than alpaca as well yeah but again i won't recommend um mumax socket for playlist because when i type sometimes the keyword just like crooked and it will interfere with other keys so i will try this one but probably not for long i will probably like try to play with the plate later Cool, so this is pretty much the stream today for this E7 and the 7V. Yes, I'm just like checking. <laughs> you can see that. I'm checking if there's any important thing. Actually, I like the feature from Android. You know, like you don't really need to like turn on the sound, it has the live capture. So you don't really need to hear what they are working cool anyway uh really nice looking keyboard but definitely not good for bleached so try other keycaps and from typing i actually pretty enjoy that i like the typing feeling but i'm not sure playlist is for me as well so probably i will try to change a different ones cool thank you for tuning in and this is like two hour stream i didn't expect but you know what? At least we have uh, identified the problem of this PCB. Definitely PCB issue. And another thing is we have Gok here to have a look at the keyboard itself. So potentially this is a good feedback to him. <laughs> yeah, you too. Have a good weekend, everyone.